Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. I am Nicole, and I live in India. And today I am with my very good and only friend, Laurence, and she is here to help me watch. It's um, Thug Guru, and we enjoy watching him. Yeah. He has, I mean, obviously he's amazing. I mean, you know. Do I agree with everything he says? Of course not, because I am American. <laughs> but um, I definitely love watching him and um, and learning from him. And today we're going to be watching when he was on with Joe Rogan, and he was explaining, you know, who Shiva is to Joe Rogan. Do you know who Shiva is? Like, have you gotten any type of background on Shiva? Mm -hmm. Do you? Have you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not quiz me right now. No, like, know? like I, I really don't have a lot of information on Shiva. Okay. I mean, I know. I think Shiva was like he's like. Um, that is it. The destroyer? No, he's not. Is he the destroyer or the creator? No, he's not the creator. He's the destroyer. destroyer. I was. Oh my god, I was right. Okay, so I mean, that's pretty much all that I know, and that's that's pretty much all. You know. So let's see if I can learn more about Shiva today from Sadhguru, explaining it to Joe Rogan. Let's go ahead and start. If you haven't already, please give me your like, please give me your subscribe, and let's go. Years ago, right. the first yogi, he's referred to as the Adi Yogi. Today, to honor him, we have set up a hundred and twelve feet tall bust of Adi Yogi in India. You must look him up. Hundred and twelve. I want to see this. This mm. looks amazing, doesn't yeah. it? It looks so beautiful. I didn't know that Sadhguru designed. I mean, he's, I think no, he did. I had no clue. Twelve yeah, you can look him up, bust. Adi Yogi. What part of India? Uh, in southern India, in Coimbatore, in Tamil Nadu. I didn't realize it's so. Not uh, loose. This is hundred and twelve feet because he gave one hundred and twelve methods as to oh. how. We are uh, saying this over fifteen thousand years ago because of they talked about certain celestial happenings. Those happenings have been confirmed today as well over fifteen thousand years ago. And we have iconographic proof of something like twelve thousand four hundred years. Yeah, that's all. Whoa. Hundred and twelve feet tall. Great hair. That's a crazy statue. Yeah. This was designed. How old is that statue? This is this was designed by me and uh, built by all volunteers inside the uh, center. Yeah. So have, is that a building? So can you go inside is, of that? You can go inside, but there's no building inside because it's metal, it gets very hot inside. Oh, beautiful. The idea was when I designed this, it took me two and a half years to design this face. You're not seeing the face very clearly. Let's see if you can get a picture where the face is clear. It's very yeah, beautiful. Maybe, yeah. So I wanted intoxication, stillness and exuberance on one face. So it he took got me it. two and a half years to design this face. It's what do beautiful. you think? It has think, these qualities. <laughs> I think you nailed it. <laughs> and, um, you nailed it. How was this constructed? This is all metal. It's all metal. How did? How was it made? So uh, we made this. Uh, it took us uh, some six hundred and eighty tons of steel. Now we are doing another one near Bangalore, the same one, but now we are doing it with almost uh, hundred and seventy tons less because now we've figured out the design much better. <laughs> wow. That's incredible though. I mean, it really is gorgeous. And that's all, is it welded together? Like yeah. how is it? See, uh, see, uh, you can see some patchwork uh, here, you're not seeing it. But actually the metal pieces are all about this much size. Uh, we could have removed that, we could have, you know, brazed that and removed that. Uh -huh. But when I looked at it, the roughness of it looked better than a smooth face, so I just left it as it is. So there are patches. So you but can see the construction You can see the construction material. Uh, not really that visible, but you can see for an observer, you can see that which gives a kind of roughness to the statue, not very smooth. So this yogi that devised these 112... So when he came, he appeared somewhere in Himalayas and uh, people saw that he was dancing wildly in ecstatic states, completely oblivious to everything around him, or he sat still for days on end. Weeks on end, he just sat still unmoving. So initially, a lot of thousands of people gathered, some miracle is happening. But slowly, because he didn't perform any miracles, no fireworks happened, people got bored and they left. Only seven disciples hung on because they saw the greatest miracle is the man is not getting up for food, water, toilet, nothing. That means he's beyond the physical nature. 
he just sat there for months on end sometimes. The only sign of his aliveness was tears of ecstasy were dribbled, dribbling down his cheeks. That was the only sign of life, otherwise he looked like he's dead. So when he came to his... some moments when he came to his consciousness, they pleaded, they wanted to learn, what is it that is happening to you? So he tried to be dismissive, he didn't want to be in touch with them, but when they hung on, when they persisted, then he put them on a preparatory kind of work. They went through the preparatory work and then he started expounding for many years what is the science of how human mechanism is made. Who do you think this person was? He's Adi Yogi. They called him, because he never introduced himself, they called him Yogi because he was the first one. They called him Adi Yogi. Adi Yogi means the first Yogi. And uh, he's also referred to as Shiva. Shiva means one who is not, that which is not. In the sense, see today modern science is speaking in these terms, in an atom for example, over ninety-nine percent of it is empty space. If there is proton, neutron, electron, all that covers less than one percent. Ninety-nine percent is empty space. So it is in the cosmos, ninety-nine percent is empty space. So if you transcend your physical nature, you become a Shiva. That means you are nothing. But nothing is the most powerful dimension of the existence because it is in the lap of the nothingness, everything is happening. What you call as everything is just one percent. Or do you think it's representative of the, the learning of yoga and the best way to establish it, to express it, was to make it a person? It's a real person because uh, the places where he came, what he spoke, everything is recorded in history largely by lore. Today people are trying to write it down in books because in India, we don't believe in scholarship. We believe in experience, inner experience. So it's always transmitted as a oral tradition for a long time. These days people are writing down in many ways. It was a real person because... Pretty spectacular human being if they could do Absolutely. all Absolutely. See, when he came down south, in southern India at that time, people were way shorter than the northern people. So they say he was twice the height of an average South Indian woman. So they say he must have been... because an average South Indian woman, tribal woman were like four, four and a half feet. So he must have been seven or eight feet tall, that people said he was twice that. And uh, they say when he stood next to your horse, he was as tall as the horse's ears. But do you think these are exaggerations? No, do you think, what do you think exaggerations could be there. But uh, because his physical size doesn't mean anything for his yoga. Right, but So why? there's no point exaggerating that aspect, I'm saying. Right. See, if he was a warrior, somebody may exaggerate him. But for a yogi, what is the point making him a big guy physically? Just to make him divine, so, so physically No, that, that is the whole thing. See, in India, the Indian culture has only spiritual paths. There is no real religion per se because a religion needs a belief, all right? Spiritual process needs a quest, a seeking. If you are on the spiritual path, we call you a seeker. If you ascribe to religion, we call you a believer, all right? Belief means something that you do not know. Because an authority speaks, you believe that. It could be your father who says that this is the truth and you believe him as a child, then it may be a priest, then it may be somebody bigger, or it may be in a book. You believe it because it comes from an authority. But the nature of that culture, the Eastern culture sees, there is no authority for us. Truth is the only authority. Authority is never the truth. So that is the essence of Eastern uh, mysticism and Eastern spirituality, that it is, you're always a seeker, never a believer. So you think that yoga just emanated from this one incredibly unique human being that was larger than everybody else, that had supernatural abilities, that existed 15,000 years ago? No. See, uh, now you're making a superhuman being out of somebody. But no. making an eight-foot-tall person who can no, go for days see, on end without drinking there have water. Been, there have been people like that, all right, in every culture. There, there, have, have, been there have been physically people. large people, but phys his physical size has nothing to do with his capabilities. Right, because but the capabilities are super physical too, aren't they? No. See, this is what it's about. Yoga is not about being superhuman. Yoga is about realizing being human is super. That's what is important. So that's the whole thing that he's saying. 
how being human is so super, if you explore your humanity to its fullest, you will become so fantastic. Being a human being itself is a fantastic feat. You don't have to act like a superhuman being. He did not perform any miracles, he did not do anything. He just taught them how to be beyond the limitations of one's physical and psychological structures, that's all. What do you think? I really, really, really like the approach of not being a believer but a seeker. Seeker. Yeah. I, uh, I never looked at it that way and uh, I really like that approach. I, I just love the way he talks. Mm, like, yeah. even when I don't agree with what he's saying, but I agree with it on this, but... No, you but know, even, he, even he when puts he his point across... With, uh, with someone like you're making it a super... Uh, human, human when that's not what it is um yeah no i uh, i really like the approach yeah um yeah 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 i didn't know that they were also um going to be making that a statue closer to bangalore like that i'll have to try to figure out how where they are in that process mm -hmm. and uh you know that statue is beautiful and I would really love to see it and I had no idea I mean Coimbatore is not that far away no it's not and uh I think you know if I ever get over to Chennai I mean <laughs> it's so close yet so far away yeah. you know if when the next time I get over there I'll have to try to um swing through and and see that uh statue because it just looks absolutely beautiful and mm -hmm. he totally nailed you know the i idea of what he was going for so yeah. it's beautiful so this was um really a nice video um i really enjoyed watching it and getting to know a little bit more about shiva um it was interesting um i liked his perspective i liked what he said and it was um it was very nice if you have a video that you'd like to see us watch or respond to please put it in the comments i'd love to hear from you if you have a comment on um you know what we did please also let us know. I would love to start a discussion. If, uh, anything else? No. No. As always, we love you and bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.